right, I'm on a beta build, and we're going to take a look at the Scourge Pestilent event to unlock Morgan Le Fay. Unfortunately, uh, this build is incomplete. Uh, the rewards are not set in stone, so they asked me not to talk about the rewards because they said they're going to change them. Also, I'm finding there's some wonky things on the build, so I don't know how accurate this information is going to be uh, until the time it gets released publicly. For example, difficulty 5 uh, does not require web warriors on nodes five and ten i don't know where they said that it would and also there was a strange interaction with uh hella greg where kestrel wasn't able to prevent hella from spawning the greg so i can't really say how effective this video is going to be for you because it's a it's a beta build i'm recording this on sunday april 10th and we're going to talk about the structure and uh how the gameplay worked and, and i'll say this right now if you're a person that enjoys tryharding and one-shotting dark dimension nodes, like playing nodes over and over again and keep resetting them and, 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 and trying to find when the teams dropped, you're gonna love this event. If you don't enjoy that, I'm gonna tell you this, you're not gonna enjoy this event very much because it is grindy as all get out if you wanna get an optimal score. Gotta give a short out to Dorky Dad. Be sure to head over his channel and I'm sure he's gonna have a video about this as well. A lot of the information that we're gonna talk about today was uh, was based off a conversation that I had with him and he's a great guy, so be sure and to check him out. Now, we're just gonna go over the overviews of the event and then we're gonna talk about some of the strategy, my personal experience with playing it and why I think it's gonna be uh, a, a one-shotter Dark Dimensions paradise or a complete torturous hell for everybody else. Uh, we're going to go over the scoring system and uh, some of the strategy, I think, to get the most amount of points. There's a little tab right here, which kind of explains the, the points system. I mean, I'm going to explain my experience with that. Scourges add status effects that make your battles more difficult. Some of them are very nominal and don't give a lot of points. Some of them make it outright impossible and, and the points to seem meaningless, if you ask me. But the key to getting higher scores and better rewards, choose wisely. Scourges and difficulty combined to determine your expected run score. You will score that many points if you completed every mission. A score bonus is granted for efficient play. So there's this uh, like turn bonus, uh, which didn't seem like a lot of points. And I don't think that running burner teams is going to hurt your score that much. It, it didn't seem like an important part. In fact, most of the waiting seemed to be on the difficulty, not so much on the scourges. Like, uh, if you look at the, we're going to look at that here in a minute, the difficulty between uh, difficulty eight and difficulty seven, how many scourges would you have to do on difficulty six to get the same amount of points as difficulty eight? Uh, it looks like it might just be easier to do difficulty eight. Most of the points are weighted on the difficulty. Score as high as you can, but be careful. Characters cannot be healed between battles. And uh, something else I noticed is that you can run uh, four members. It doesn't have to be a complete team. And I and I found that I did have to use them on node 10 uh, to clean up. Like I wasn't able to finish with uh, uh, the web warriors and I had to take the four man dark. It looks like this is all gonna come down to web warriors in my opinion, we're gonna talk about that. Complete all the missions or reset partway through. You can choose to reset. You will be awarded your portion of expected run score. You can run this thing over and over and over again. Uh, I lost interest after a little bit because it was very tedious in my opinion. Your best score determines your leaderboard position and your milestone progress. Get higher scores to get better rewards, including horsemen character shards. So first thing we're going to look at is uh, how the difficulty. So the difficulty, you can see that the score points move up. Now, I found that uh, difficulty 8 was very challenging. Now, in, in this particular beta build, all of the characters in this roster are at four red stars, seven yellow stars, gear tier 15 with all of the T4s. That's right, 7775. And I found that it was relatively easy to go through that in difficulty seven, and I could enable several of the scourges, and I still did not have a hard time. But when I went to difficulty eight, it became a nightmare and where I would have to send burner teams in and then to, to, to clear the cooldowns and then uh, attempt each node multiple times. But if you look at the difference, we got 849,000 and then we've got 1.2 million for difficulty eight. And so uh, the, the, the thing that was very interesting is like, is it better to go for difficulty six or five? It depends on your roster. Uh, my suggestion is to 
uh, try difficult, try difficult, random difficulty that you think, or try difficulty four, difficulty five. And if you can get through it with no scourges, and then go up to the next one. But when you get to a difficulty that you can barely finish, then I'm going to start adding the scourges. So I'm right now trying to determine if I can beat difficulty eight. If I can beat difficulty eight with no scourges, then I'm going to start adding the scourges to get more points because I don't believe at difficulty six, I'm going to be able to add, or it doesn't look that way for my initial testing. We're going to be able to add enough points to get more than beating in a difficulty eight. Let's just uh, go over all the scourges and we're going to click them. And you can see how it like, if you turn on experimental serum, enemies gain 10% max health, which is actually not that big a deal. But look how many points you get. How many points, more points do I get? Well, wow, you get like nothing for adding these scourges. And, and some of them make it nearly impossible to play. When a player gains stealth, they gain taunt. That's fine, let's turn that one on. Summon enemies gain 20% max health. Okay, that doesn't seem that bad. Let's add that one. So they're starting to add up and there's a lot of them, but you, it's hard to get over that 1.2 million. When a player character gains the ability integer, apply slow to them. Okay, so um, you know, I think I wanted to turn that one. One of the characters I wanted to use was uh, Captain America Sam Wilson. Maybe I wouldn't want to do that. Maybe I would. I don't know, but you can click on that. Now we're at 860,000. When a player character, character gains ability energy, each enemy deals 80% piercing damage to them. Again, if you're not going to use characters like Captain America Sam Wilson, maybe that's one you want to turn on. You get more points. Uh, Dark Resolve, and on ally death, enemies gain defense up. Well, uh, this one, I didn't seem like I have a hard time pushing this in here because basically if you have one character die, you're probably resetting the node and you're gonna be playing again anyways. The plan is to have none of your characters die and play the node over and over and over and over again until you get the perfect run and that doesn't happen. So we're gonna check that one. Enemies gain 20% max health. Okay, let's add that one. Enemies generate one ability energy each time they generate an ability energy. That sounds terrible. I don't think I want that. That means their ultimates are always gonna be going off. Oh, maybe you can make, figure out how to make it work, but for me, that doesn't sound like when I wanted it to be. On enemy death, enemies gain immunity and regeneration. Nope, You're, the, the plan is to be killing them all, all the time. Uh, when a player character gains ability energy, they gain defense down. That doesn't sound like a fun time. When any player character dies, Enemies gain two ability energy. Now, I, I, I clicked that one because again, I feel like the idea is you want to one shot the nodes without any players dying is the optimal strategy. And if one of your characters die, then you're probably resetting the node and starting over. So let's click that one. When an enemy is healed, they gain deflect. Okay, I don't know. That one may or may not be a good one, but we can check that. When an enemy takes damage, they gain speed up for two turns. I can tell you that. I don't want that happening. Speed is not a good thing. On spawn, enemies gain immunity. Oof, also doesn't always, net, that sounds like a bad time right there. Uh, when enemy drops below 50% health, they gain death proof. Okay, let's do it. That doesn't seem like that big of an inconvenience. Player character healing is reduced by 20%. Oh, ouch. Ah, oh, well, maybe you could get through it. Maybe you can't. Let's just try it. Uh, when a player character takes damage, they gain bleed. Ooh, I don't know how I feel about that one there. Let's just click it anyways. When a player character gains ability energy, they apply defense down for one turn per ability energy gain. So again, uh, several several of these mechanics in here are dependent on, uh, are you going to take advantage of gaining ability energy? And if you're not, then you probably wanna check this one. So like for me, I, I feel like I'm not gonna run Captain America Sam Wilson just because of that right there. When a player character blocks, apply stun to them, no way. <laughs> no way. When a player character uses their ultimate, they gain blind. No way! Enemies gain 30% max health. Okay, we'll try it just because we love it. When a player character health drops below 50% max health, apply trauma to them. No way, that sounds horrible. When a player character uses their ultimate, all enemies gain one ability energy. Nope, don't want to do that. Just that uh, This is just my initial take on this. Player characters' ultimates cost one more ability energy. But these sound horrible. On enemy death, clear all negative effects from enemies. Uh, that might be interesting. I I, I don't know. Um, you know, but negative effects are important, right? You know, that's one that we'd have to think about. When player character special abilities cost one more ability energy. No! When a player character uses their special, they gain ability block. That sounds horrible. On enemy turn, they gain offense up. That sounds super painful. And uh, no help coming on turn. Apply two heal box to player characters. So... Um, yeah, there's that, that some of these things seem like it would make the playing it nearly impossible and to get more than 1.2 million, 
you almost have to check all of them, right? So this is what I was saying is that for me, you know, do I want to play difficulty seven or, you know, I, or do I want to play difficulty eight? Because uh, I found that difficulty seven for gear tier 15, four red, seven yellow, seven, 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 five, as far as their, their, their T4s was relatively easy. And, you know, a lot of people might have higher tier characters. And so I, I think, you know, if you can do a higher difficulty, you're just better off. And I'm finding that I, with no scourges enabled, I'm actually able to progress through difficulty eight, where if I went on difficulty seven and turned all the scourges on, I would get nowhere and I wouldn't get as many points. So I would say my strategy for going into this initially is going to be, can I get through difficulty X, difficulty five, difficulty six, difficulty seven with no scourges? And then when I finally get to one where I say, like, hey, there's no chance I can beat difficulty eight. Well, then I'm gonna drop down to difficulty seven and start adding scourges. Or if difficulty eight, I can clear. Well, then on my second run on um, difficulty eight, I'm gonna start adding scourges so that I can get a higher points because maybe this is not that bad. Maybe this is not, and then I can get extra points doing this right here, you know, that, that way I can get it. Now, what is my experience in playing it? I wanna show that uh, uh, this is difficulty eight and this is my run on difficulty eight. And what I was doing, and, and you can see that it was, this is a lot like Dark Dimension. What I do is I run a burner team in here. I ran kind of a, uh, a bad team, and then I ran another bad team, wiped out all their cooldowns, and then I tried over and over again with my main team to get through it. And I was able to do that or, you know, with several of these teams, run a burner team in, maybe run a semi-good team, and then I run my best team, right? And I feel like there's going to be a lot of strategies for each nodes. Nodes one and two require hero. Uh, nodes three and four are global. So like global, I was able to run some big teams right here, uh, like Omega Red, uh, Dr. Doom, Mr. Sinister, and Emma. Uh, on, on node four, I, I don't think uh, I was able to run Ultron. Be, and I don't know how good uh, Dr. Doom is because there's a real pesky death pool in there. And then we get to the node where you can't run strategies. Like, I feel like there's a ton of strategies and gameplay videos to be made around hero, uh, some, some good strategies at optimal teams and learning the nodes around global, uh, optimal strategies around villain. And maybe if you have Dormammu unlocked, it's gonna be great. And then we get up here to cosmic. Oh yeah, you know what? Run your uh, infinity watch. Infinity watch is amazing right there. And it is, there's literally no strategy involved on node five let me explain to you what the strategy is on known five all of these web warriors have a percent dodge chance right here percent dodge chance on O oh, spider or scarlet spider uh 30 percent dodge chance spider-man 25 percent dodge chance uh spider-man miles you know 50 percent dodge chance while he's in stealth spider-man that is the strategy on this node Play it a million times over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and hope you don't die. This is this is garbage. And 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 if you want to get the optimal run, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to sit in front of your phone or your desktop computer and, and uh T'Challa's gonna go, okay, perfect run, we got the dodge. Because if you didn't get the dodge right there, Spoderman would be sitting at like 10% health right now. So this is a perfect run right here. I'm dead serious. This is how it plays out. Is like, am I going to get an optimal run? Like, so I ran, I've ran this like maybe 50 times. And one time I got to like the last three people because there's only 10 enemies. And then someone died at the last minute. This is node five. I have to save them for node 10. There's no revives. All right, we got the dodges. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to save this because actually this will heal him up. And I think healing up is kind of important. I just want to just go over the gameplay strategy and you can see how this is just going to go over and over and over and over again. Okay. I really wanted to use that on Kitty Pride, Kitty Pride because of uh, uh, Kitty Pride has that super um, annoying disrupted and web warriors hate disrupted. But anyways, we'll just go through here. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let's start on this end and chain this way. Let's see, maybe this will be the one time that I win and it, it comes through without a lot of problems. Here we go. It just seems like it's just playing it over and over and over and hoping you don't die. 
And then see, and then there's also um, we got to kill Dagger before she takes her ten turn, or before she takes her turn. Okay, all right, this is not going to be the run. Uh, all right, it looks like this is not going to be the run because uh, look at their health pools and they got disrupted. Yeah, see, this is it. We have to save. Uh, we have to save the stun because uh, there's a cloak that drops. All right, let's get some heals. Let's uh, put the disrupted up. All right. All right, we need to get through. We need to get through uh, Dagger before she takes a second turn. All right. Well, maybe I will get through it. Okay, so there's the cloak. And I was saving the cloak. Uh, I was saving like a stun from... Um, from Spider-Man, because the cloak, we definitely do not want cloak. Uh, all right. No, no, node over. See, reset the node. That, okay, we lost. And, and we're just gonna have to do this over and over again until we get a perfect run. And and, and if if he would have dodged right there, we could have go. And because there's always a chance they could dodge. I, I mean, I'm gonna guess and say this, that you could beat any difficulty of of any difficulty with web warriors if they dodge every single time and there's if you play it enough you'll get that perfect run where they just dodge everything and you're going to be able to finish it there's no strategy at all there's no strategy at all for this game mode you're i mean you can have a bigger web warriors but at some point uh you're going to go at some point you're going to go into a higher difficulty and somebody's going to be able to clear it you know difficulty nine difficulty ten right it, where you're just like, they're going to dodge everything and you're going to make it through it. And if you play it enough times, you'll get through it. I think there's going to be a lot of strategy on the other nodes, but you don't have any choices and you don't have any burner teams on nodes five and 10 because it's web warriors and dark hunters only. And uh, the four dark hunters will make a cleanup, but you can't do that on the first node. And you're just going to have to play it over and over again. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if everybody's going to want to be willing to do this, but that's my take on this event. And uh, we'll see when it goes live and we stream it a bunch if my take is on. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep on gaming.